this specific one is probably the crown jewel of our collection here. Uh, another one that I'll show you that's kind of been under wraps, recolor grafted cap. It always blows my mind how we know so much in this hobby, but there's so much we don't know. Kevin, how you doing? Doing great, you? Good to see you, fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready to nerd out and geek out about some, some coral and some, uh, some grafting stuff today. I feel like there's a whole host of corals that we naturally see grafting, and you guys have some tricks up your sleeve too, but we're in the farm right now. Why don't you take us around, while we're talking about grafting, to some of the naturally grafted corals that we, we would often see in the hobby. Sure, I'd say a good place to start would be probably one of the most uh, well-known grafted pieces, the uh, original grafted cap. We have a good example over here of oh, a yeah. colony. Yeah. You know, nice green blended with the red. And it's not just two glued next to each other where you would just kind of see them wall up. That's the difference is they're actually growing together naturally and, and swirling the colors and and forming. So, you know, that one's a, a very nice piece. Years ago, we were combining a whole bunch of different types of Montipora caps that we had collected, and we stumbled upon this particular mix, which is a much brighter, almost yellowish green that we were able to graft with one yeah. of the red caps. So you can kind of see the difference between the two colonies. I mean, this one is just an absolute stunner, the contrast. A really long period of time, we were able to promote a lot of that veining and the more natural swirling that you see on this particular piece, rather than you know something that's more like a half-half. But to get ones that have the crazy swirls and a lot of that, it does take a long time to, to get that really forming naturally and fine veining and color mix. I think if I'm watching this right now and I'm a hobbyist, I feel like Monopora is probably one of those those corals that's the most affordable to try this on my own. Oh, so yeah. is it really as easy as gluing two frags right next to each other? Yeah, so the cool thing about the Montipora is they generally don't just kill each other either. So even if you did combine a handful and make a nice mix, they're not gonna just straight up take over and sting and destroy the ones around each other. A lot of times they'll just spiral naturally. Uh, another one that I'll show you that's kind of been under wraps is a three color grafted cap okay. that we were able to get. Um, kind of similar to this one, but adding a different shade of green as well. Wow, so okay. Here's a couple examples. Oh yeah. Of what I was talking about. So you've got a, kind of a more foresty green, that neon, and then the red. Yeah, and those are all true graphs. You can really see how the colors actually blend and mix. So how long from the time that you started that to the size it is now? So this particular one, I would say, is probably six months plus, where we've also been shaving the rim off to make other colonies where we can actually continue cutting select parts and manipulating the colors to get even more desirable mixes. Yeah. You can see a few of the others we've been working on here. Okay, yeah. Where they're starting to get more of that, that veining where the colors kind of swirl together. And you know that that isn't working if they're starting to grow over each other and not into each other? Yeah, when you see them wall up, one will start to usually rise above the other and overlap it. You can this see is a, that one has... This would be a failed, right? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> we were really hoping that that would have been one that we could break ground on. But you see there's one, two, three, four, or five, six different varieties there that just didn't quite take to each other. This piece, which is our three color grafted Satosa. Satosa, yeah. So that one actually has purple, kind of a greenish orange hue, and a red that we have coming together here. You, know, you can see another example here of one that I tried to graft a different orange variety in. And you can see right there the walling and how one is kind of dominating the other where it's slightly and slowly growing 
over it. Now this is a Cyphastria that is a true graft. We have multiple Cyphastrias actually that, that have you know shown to be true grafts. Um, I do have a litho in another system. Oh yeah. You can kind of see the difference how that's not walling up at all. It has accepted itself. Yes, yes, definitely. Let's get to the, the big stuff, the Acropora mm -hmm. and some of that grafting. Can you show us some examples of stuff that you've kind of cobbled together? As far as the Acropora goes, you know, a lot of these ones, we've tried, combined them, given them time. I've experimented with different methods where I've given them room to heal and grow into each other. None of that's really worked on the Acros. But what we have found is just by the sheer amount that we've packed in our facility, we've had a lot of naturally occurring grafts popping up in captivity on these aquacultured pieces. Cool. This specific one is probably the crown jewel of our collection here. We call that one the Fruity Splice. Originally, it was from our Fruity Pebbles, which is one of our most well-known acros. We have a colony right here where you can see, again, a beautiful piece and crusts green, gets purples, uh, oranges as well, but it doesn't have that extreme neon green that you'll see on the splice colony there. So then you frag that section out mm -hmm. and make and try to colonize that as much as possible? Yeah, so the way we try to do it, just like you said, we'll remove that, but try to get enough of it where it's not risky, where it could end up dying. And then with this specific one, we got enough of the green growing to where I eventually even cut and spliced it back together in different sections. So that's another thing that a lot of people can do when they get a piece like this at home, is if you get certain ones that are kind of dominating one way or another with the coral color, you can actually cut them up and glue them back together, continue to mix that color to kind of make that colony look whatever way you want. And then they eventually regraft together and get the swirling and the really nice pretty um, natural look that, that you kind of see on that one. So there is swirl, so there are some that are kind of green and purple or purple and green in this? Oh yeah. So here's oh, a yeah. good example where you see on that branch where it's kind of bled or like that one, how it has a little bit of that neon green on one half of it. Gosh, this is so cool. And the purple on the other side. Yeah. Um, so that kind of shows you the potential of when you give it time. Are you used to your arm just always being wet? part of the job you know <laughs> always come home covered in salt creep and yeah. shoes don't last very long or you have to have a rotation of shoes because they they look like you uh, were dunked in the beach pretty often <laughs> and, yeah this here is the raspberry splice so you can kind of see two colonies that I've been working on where one has primarily the original coloration which is the raspberry limeade which has kind of the nice purplish reds with the green base. Yeah. And then the other sections where you have that real neon green that's coming in. This is Anacropora? Yes, so that Anacropora would be an, an example of one that unfortunately has not worked. It looks now, beautiful well, together. It does. And, and a lot <laughs> of times you can make, um, you know, cool looking colonies that way where they'll sort of intermingle and mix. You'll just never get that swirling or that you know, the, the aberration of colors that you'll find when you're mixing two that are a true graph. Yeah. So that's one cool thing that, that people can look out for in their personal tanks is just if you happen to notice one little speck, sometimes that's all it, it starts at. And eventually, if you're you know careful with it and you pay attention to it, you can promote that into something truly unique. So I have this piece over here, which if you look this side, you know, you get those nice red colors, it encrusts green, it even gets hints of orange. But we actually had a while back that little speck on the side that popped up. Oh, yeah. With that neon green. This is another new one that popped up in the farm. Um, similar to Jason Fox's Cold Fusion. Yeah. But I don't know if it's the same thing. I actually bought a frag from him just so I can test it. And once I get that one grown out, I'm going to try putting them together and seeing if it you know, does anything similar or if they kill each other off, just to find out if it is another unique graft. But that isn't one that I originally had bought from him. So we'll have to see over time if it's the, the same, but the coloration is very similar. Yeah, his was, the one that he has is, was naturally occurring, right? He Yeah, he said that he had actually got that um, from diving the reefs. 
it always blows my mind how we know we know so much in this hobby, but there's so much we don't know. So this is that encrusting one that I was telling you about that was originally the, uh, the Megachrome that started popping up with those neon greens. And we've been, as you can see, the original pieces that we used to make this tile, re-splicing it back together to get something really interesting like this. We have some bird's nests. If you really want to put a new spin on some of the classic corals that are great for beginners who are trying to get more into SPS. Yeah, finding those corals that are more A, beginner friendly, mm -hmm. and B, affordable, because we don't all have top shelf aquatics, <laughs> Acropora tanks in our homes, you know? Oh yeah, I hear you. This one here is actually an example, believe it or not, of one that did not take 100%. Like, if you look really close, you can see the walling occurring right there. It's almost like that white lightning line. That's where the different ones are. But if you look carefully on this one, the actual skeleton merges and all comes from the same piece. Oh, There's no separation yeah. on that, but you see the different colors. They are the same species. So that's one thing with the bird's nest is you're definitely gonna have to get the same species, but we've tried mixing a handful of them because God, we probably have about 20 different types of bird's nest here in the farm that we're growing. Yeah. Um, so we've mixed darn near about every one of them to find certain ones that take. Uh, I have an example over here to kind of show what we do to find that mix. Well, I guess here's another brief one too where you can see the Cyphastrias where it doesn't quite take. See how there's, there's that rolling right yeah. there? We thought this one had potential though because they didn't seem to grow over each other as much. As far as the bird's nests go, you can see there's a whole lot of different varieties mixed in there, but none of which are true graphs. Sometimes they can trick you, like this one here, where it looks like it's growing and connected in the skeleton, but it's actually coming from the underside. Oh. And a lot of times they'll just wall up next to each other and they do coexist to where you can get a really cool looking colony like this, but it's not a true graft where they're actually connected at the skeleton growing together and mixing colors. And we've discussed potentially, um, you know, taking some of the two different sections of these corals and actually having genetic testing done to find out if there's anything actually different going on yeah. or if they're genetically the same. Um, so we can really kind of understand it a little bit better and hopefully find out how we can you know, make more breakthroughs down the road. Yeah, I think what he's saying is he wants to give the taxonomists more work. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, sorry about that. <laughs> I feel like every week it's a different name. Thank you so much for, uh, for taking us through the, all the grafted corals you guys have naturally and I guess man-made. If you get any grafted pieces in your tank, call Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite grafted piece in this video is. And if you've got a really cool grafted piece in your tank, let us know in the comments section below. Big thanks to Kevin Berta and Top Shelf Aquatics for letting us come tour the farm. We've got some more videos in store for you, which I'm very excited about. And if you're looking for more coral conversations, you can always join us on the Reef Therapy Podcast. We're on Spotify, iTunes, all your favorite podcatchers. We're also on YouTube as well. Everything is linked below. If you're like me, then you just want to hear conversation about reef keeping and the hobby because nobody else understands you. And if you can do one more thing before I go, please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. And I'll see you in the next one.